Okay, the other things what I want to look, it's the cameras and we'll combine with the renders because they're kind of almost going hand by hand but with a little bit different. So the cameras, it's what we see. And anytime, like right now, for example, I said the current camera, but notice as soon when I switch and I readjust, we're going down, it switched to perspective. The reason is why, because my camera settings still be there. So if I'm going and I set reset, the camera it's reset back to my camera was before to be sure that my camera is remember new positions I need to go and set copy this view to my current render camera so if I go right here now this camera is remembering my settings the next things about the cameras that you can have it as many as you want it and when you render that is become a little bit more interesting because you can see it's separating renders and cameras. You can create a many cameras, you can animate cameras, you can animate the properties and let's look very fast what we have. Position, rotation, this is all can be animated. You have a light exposure, currently it's one, so it is like after exposures. As well, you remember you have an exposure right here, which is a link together. In some cases, you may want to use the exposure just to preview what you work. It's too dark or too bright. Can adjust. You also can have right here perspective view, horizontal, power, vertical, and the same things. You can some of them you adjust from the navigation control and copy to the camera. And you also can have it different perspective. So, for example, we can have our goings preview or spherical. Surrender everything. So let's go back to perspective. And these ones is kind of nice when we're creating sky dome, maybe for the games or other things, we can use spherical. But in many cases, you will just work with the perspective. Perspective, most interesting for you, it is working with the focal lens. This is probably will be the most uh, useful. Currently, it says to 31. Uh, the human eye, or it's how you used to work, uh, look, it's about 50 to 55, depend. And uh, most cases you find using 35 millimeters as for the film, just a little bit wider. You can also create telefocus or bring closer. In some cases, this is you can create different cameras, even from same position, but with different type of lens and see how it will work. Also right here, you can see film aperture in millimeters, so you can preset in different ways. Okay, blur. It will allow us to create a depth of field or motion, uh, motion blur. So let's look on our camera. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. And one thing what I want to do is look right here. We have this kind of square up front. Okay, let me move this one and adjusting. And you can see it's represent the angle that currently camera can see. So if we go back and adjust, this is approximately what the cover through if we see through the camera. Also, right here we have it options for the focal distance and aperture. And this is important because in the depth of field. So this one first it says how close or far away we set. And in some cases, if you want it, you can remember you can zoom out and you can have a meter set okay for example i can go take mirror and i can say okay from camera to here and it will be about 1.2 kilometers okay so we'll go to um 1.5 for example actually 500 zero, zero, so we'll set this way okay focal and next this is aperture remember the smaller aperture the more blur you will have it the f stops so you can modify like for example right here we have an f128 it's almost teeny tiny so we have a very wide depth of field and we want to shallow so if you're going to like almost 0 0.4 it will be very shallow um, field so we can preview right here click and you can see now we have it in our enable depth of field so you can see where we'll be blur or where 
it will be shallow so we can increase slightly and right here you can see how the depth is working as well if we're decreasing right now it doesn't show as a depth but it is will change how much blur will apply based on aperture and this is mostly because when you work with the cameras or other ones you will become very familiar and this is just as to simulate this preview for us again this is depth of field uh, for natural look and other ones the next we also have an import or export and this is camera settings you will notice some of them you can import when you're using a bx or for example right here if you have it um, going from the nuke back and forward so you can set those cameras as well import or export and again you export chain file or fbx um, the film box format adobe so you can work with those ones um, these ones we probably will cover a little bit more in details when i work with animations um, but again that is will require separate tutorial because we need to work with some other applications be sure to see how they will nicely work and link together okay till we here let's go now how i say it's related very close to the renders so i have it my camera right here and i have it my render set when i click on uh, let me go save it this one and if i render now my render will take what this camera is see however if we look inside the renders you can have it more than one render assigned to the camera so for example i can go right here Oops, i can take my camera and i can select a second render reason is why because i can take one render i can set very low details just very small preview okay for example create like 500 only so i'll select this render preview render and you can see it's rendered very fast for me so i can have it preview however if i want it i can same time without going back now and readjusting anything i can have a second render right here selected okay and then this render for example i can select a better resolution you know nicer effect and depend on this i can now have a two different preview or full resolution and render just to switch and select between of them so same camera different renders and if you have it, um, different cameras so like like for example let's go select we add new camera right here let's see if i go select to my render you notice it's now disconnecting so you have it one too many selections you can have it only one camera select per render but you can have it multiple renders per camera so this is kind of annoying when you start render and if you want to simulate like 3d render or other ones so it's kind of you will need to create um, different renders for each of them okay let's look closer on some renders that properties we have it we did use it before when we apply details quality but overall again we have an image width and height if you want to lock your um, expect right shows or you can select from directly from here for example 1.8 if i'm right will be for 32 so you have a different expect rate shows that you can lock or do fully customizable you also can um, showing currently it's a link to the camera so if we need to really here we can assign a different camera to this so it's already assigned that way um, we also have a surface visible if we start rendering atmospheric cloud visible this is just again how i say if you want set preview or full quality you can set this way um, also render image and on the bottom right here we have additional options for the quality what we used before we can enable depth field which is currently for example if i enable and we have it noise reduction or normal uh, noise reduction will take just slightly a little bit longer but normally just keep it this way and uh, when we render you'll see this is blur will apply with our distance fall off okay we have it cropping to specific areas so if i need it i can go ahead and just select to render 
specific um, if I want to look on something close up and without rendering any other ones. So we have it cropping objects or cropping to a specific object. So in this case, it will include area just right around the object. We have extra options for the type of the renders. Again, this extra effects, advanced, and all this, this is will go into a little bit more in depth when we start working with different renders preset and render optimizations um, with the Turgen. So just overall, again, this is effect we can apply it in reducing just contrast. The render also advanced options on the multi-threading, how much you want apply threads of your, um, when you start rendering also as bucket controls. Example, the smaller bucket will produce, it's a sampling around. So this is will produce the, a little bit better, but um, again, increased size. Maximum buckets will speed up, but will create less sampling around the area. It's how many pixels will sample around. Okay, we also have it, um, size of subdivision in a megabyte. This is one most common warning message. You may have it when you start rendering. If you start rendering and it's come up, says, uh, please increase subdivision cache to speed up performance. So you want to increase memory that can be allocated to subdivision. And how I say this is most common warning message, maybe pop up when you start rendering some projects. Okay, also you have it, um, ray details regions. This is all optimizations, as I will say, look on them more. Okay, you can specify speci uh, specific render layer. And if you have it, you have the um, output, your image and specific areas. The unit specify them per each render. And again, mostly for me, I render to network drive. So I will change this and create or specify and some other hard drive normally. But again, this is unique kind of almost done per each um, render. Okay, so one more thing so I want to look in a render. Um, when we're going at these global elimination settings, this has allowed overall quality of the lighting, how it's produced. Again, increasing details, sample quality and all the stuff, will produce better result, but it will increase time of render. So it is better quality, longer time. So you always kind of come by between them. Also, you can create a cache file if you want to use it in other applications or if you want to save for the future use. Okay. And also you have an option of the image pass to save additional um, informations or produce better quality. But again, how I said before, you increase quality. All of these options will look a little bit more in our advanced rendering tutorials.